Hey everyone, once Benton here with a battle report. So this is a rematch game against the Corn Demon Army that I faced just a couple of battle reports ago. Uh, the only difference being that both of us dropped our points from 2500 to 2400, and I of course am using my most recent list, which is has just a couple tweaks to it. So we rolled up Dawn Attack, which uh, kind of made for an interesting deployment, especially for my opponent. He had a, let's see, on my left flank, he that's the one unit he, that got put there, these uh, Flesh Hounds. Everyone else rolled either on my right flank or in the middle. And so he just kind of moved the ones in the middle to the side so that he had his guys kind of together. Uh, there were two pieces of impassable terrain, which really, I mean, I actually offered we could just make them hills or something, and, and uh, he said it was fine the way it was. So, and by the way, yes, I did uh, win the roll off for who deployed first and got to pick sides. So uh, I chose the other side mainly because of that impassable terrain gap right there. So anyway, you see as um, that's his build. He's got heralds in each of his units, which gives them uh, hatred. And uh, yeah. So luckily, nothing for me rolled in my left flank. Uh, here in the middle, starting at the left, I've got a Tuscor chariot, a unit of gore. They all have extra hand weapons. I've got my Gorgon. In front of him, in the left of this picture, is a, uh, a horde of gore. So there's 40 of them with my battle standard bearer, the plus one strength banner, two, two weapons each. Harpies behind him. On the hill, I've got another unit of, a medium sized unit of gore, this one with my great brave shaman. And he's outfitted to get in combat and hopefully survive and, and generate extra power dice uh, by wounding models. Then I've got my best gore with my beast lord and harpies behind him. And that's it. So we go to Beastman turn one. It's kind of, these are fast games because I have, in this, when I rolled this game anyway, I have no offensive magic whatsoever, and I have no shooting. My opponent has no magic and no shooting. So <laughs> it's really just a matter of uh, moving forward, trying to get the matchups you want, and then just rolling dice. So here are the units over here. Uh, take the Harpies. I wanted to make sure that his, his Blood Crushers couldn't see him. I didn't want him to, to be able to swoop all the way around that hill, attack those guys, and then be in my flank. So Demon's turn one, uh, he moves up as you can see. I know his normal ta tactic is to charge out with his Bloodthirster, and so it's possible that he, he charged and just failed the charge. Uh, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't really hurt him. All his units are far enough away that I'm not likely to make a charge. And then, of course, if I fail a charge, then he can double charge me. And that's really my biggest concern. I actually really like my matchup, Bestigore with my general against his Blood Crushers. I think if my general can just do his job, I think I'll win that one fairly easily. Um, then my, I'm not too worried about his, his uh, Bloodthirster coming into a unit if he's all alone, just because I'll be steadfast for a while and I, I can hang out. So my concern is him getting a unit of Bloodletters and his Bloodthirster into the same combat. So here in the far left, I really just move things up. I don't, I'm sorry, he moves his uh, Flesh Hounds up and then angles them outside. So he's, again, he's far enough away, it's, it's not real likely I'll make a charge. Overall, it looks like that. And we go to Beastman turn two. So I don't remember if I tried to charge or not. I think I did with my Bestigore and with my Great Brave Shaman's unit. I tried to make those charges. I knew I was likely to fail. But then again, I had my Harpies available so that if I failed, I could redirect his stuff. So now his Blood Crushers can't come charged into my Bestigore. Um, and the more importantly, the Blood Letters on the left can't make their charge. And that'd be important because, again, I don't want the Blood Letters to come into my horde with my BSB and have his general join them and between the two of them just tear me up. Uh, here on the left, I tested for the Gorgon not to charge, and then I just marched him forward so that his Flesh Hounds can't do anything except charge him. And I like that matchup. I think I'll win in, in the long run. And my plan there, by the way, is to release all my attacks on the Flesh Hounds, of course, the first round of combat. But if he starts getting wounds on me, I think I'm just going to use my uh, special attack, Killing Blow on a 4-up, and I regain D6 wounds, and then I still get my Thunder Stomp. So that's my, my plan for trying to keep the Gorgon alive in a prolonged combat with Flesh Hounds. So anyway, overall it looks like that. We found out this forest here on the left is the the Wildwood. So if you're in there at the end of the movement phase, you roll a d6, and there's a 50-50 chance you'll take d6 wounds. Or d6 strength 4 hits or something. 
So we go to Demon's turn two. His Blood Crushers charge the Harpies. His Blood Thirster charges my Great Brace Shaman's unit. And that's the biggest reason why I don't want him getting the charge is because he positioned him such that he's touching my Great Brace Shaman. And if I could charge him, I'd position it so that he wouldn't be touching my Great Brace Shaman. Um, this round of combat, it doesn't really matter because I have a, cha a champion that can challenge, but after that, that's tough. Flesh Hounds charge my Gorgon. So he does two wounds to me. I actually do four wounds to him. Uh, I win combat, winning an extra frenzy, uh, but he doesn't lose any more wounds to popping. The good news is I set up the chariot so that I get an easy flank charge next time, and I really think between the two of them, they should take care of those flesh hounds pretty easily. Uh, over here, uh, is, do you like the waste of my magic phase? On turn one, I didn't even roll magic. I, I rolled like a 10 for Winds of Magic, and I just didn't cast any spells because nothing mattered. Turn two, I put Curse of Honor here in his general. He didn't fail his dangerous terrain, and then you know he's going to be in with my champion, so who cares if he's re-rolling to hit, and who cares if I'm extra strength and toughness because either way, my champion's going to die. <laughs> so it's kind of stupid. So Beastman turn three, I get the relatively easy charges of my Bestigor and my Gore Horde into those two units. Uh, the Bestigor, I think, I think it's going to take a while, although I still think I'm going to win that eventually. So I'm not really worried about it. My Gore Horde, I'm a little bit concerned about because he has his uh, his second unit of Blood Letters ready to countercharge, and it's going to be really tough for me to uh, to completely pop this unit. So one thing to keep in mind. What I'm thinking is, if I win combat, I'm going to reform and basically shuffle to the left and to make it so that if his other guys do come in, they're only going to be touching with probably two files. One, or one file, then one on a corner, or something like that. So, of course, my chariot comes in here. Yep, that's the, that's the matchup. This is the same fight that happened in the previous game where I charged in and he whooped me and, I, and then he beat me in combat and then ran me down. So... Although I like to think I have the odds here, it actually kind of scares me. Uh, he's hitting on threes re-rollable. I'm hitting on fours re-rollable. He's wounded on threes. I'm wounded on threes. You know, uh, so it really comes down to I just have more attacks. I'm in horde and I have two weapons each. And there's that one. I'm going to get a challenge with his herald against my general. And my biggest concern there is his herald has a higher initiative. And he has killing blows. So... If he rolls a six to wound and I fail my ward save, that's going to be, <laughs> I lose my general. And that's exactly what happens. I was actually a little bit miffed when that happened. I'm like, really? Um, I mean, it's not insanely unusual to happen, but yeah, he rolled one to wound and he, he rolled a six and uh, I failed my four up. So the general dies. In addition to the general, he killed, I think, seven Bestigor. So uh, that was pretty brutal. I am pretty happy. My general never got to fight, but at least my Bestigor held their own. They killed three guys, so that's uh, uh, assuming two wounds each is a six wounds. So I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna complain about that. Of course, I was steadfast with the reroll, so it was all good. Now this one was really interesting. I know my champion's dead, and uh, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna issue a challenge. I mean, if he issued a challenge with my Great Brave Shaman, that would be great because I would just refuse and go to the back rank. So during my magic phase, I turned my Great Brave Shaman into a Mountain Chimera, because that's like my solution to everything now. <laughs> mountain Chimera just beats everything. And then he, he, he surprised me, and he went ahead and issued a challenge. And I think he did it because he knew my, my Mountain Chimera was going to get all his attacks anyway, and so it just saved him from getting my gore attacks on him. Uh, it also prevented him, by the way, from stomping, because he can't stop my Mountain Chimera. So uh, he goes on me, he gets only two wounds, which seems great, but you know he has seven attacks, hitting on threes, uh, re-rolling. So let's say he hits five. He's only strength six on toughness seven, so the problem is him getting past my toughness. So he only did two wounds, which I think is about odds. We start out this combat, I have four die six plus one attacks, and I roll a one, a one, a two, and a four. <laughs> and I was ticked. <laughs> I, I, was, I, I was pretty ticked. Um, you know, of course, I'm hitting on fours, but then I'm wounding on threes, and then he has his ward save. So I do two wounds on him, which I felt was subpar. I really would expect the Mountain Chimera to do better than that. Uh, but again, I have a, he doesn't get Thunder Stomp on me because we're in a challenge. Um, so I win by, we, we, we both did two wounds. I win by a standard in three ranks. I win by four. He's leadership nine. So anything over five, and he takes wounds. 
and he has two wounds already. So he's three wounds left. He rolled a seven, which means he would have been down to one wound. I think that he thought that he would have died at seven. I think he was just doing the math real quick in his head. So he re-rolled it with the BSB and rolled a 10. And so the bloodthirster goes pop. And I was thrilled, ecstatic for that to happen. And he wasn't. Uh, over here, yeah, my Gorgon tried the uh, swallow hole thing. One attack, four up, killing blow, regain wounds, and it failed. So, uh, but between Thunderstomp, between the Chariot, we, we easily popped the Flesh Hounds on the left. He now has uh, three Frenzy Markers on him, but he also has four wounds. Uh, over here, uh, very happy with how the Gore performed. They, I think we lost 11, and we probably only killed, uh, what is that? Uh, nine, maybe? Uh, but I'll take it. I'll take that every day. And then I reformed so that if the other horde comes in, they don't hit my BSB, and again, they're only going to get two guys in combat. So I felt that was probably as much as I could hope for. And so instead of charging in there, they charged in to my uh, Great Brave Shaman's unit. And uh, I don't know if that was a mistake or not. I know that if he charged in against my horde and and I didn't break, then I would get to charge him, and, and uh, you never know, my best scores might be able to come to the flank pretty soon. So it could be that this felt like it was safer. And I think these guys have some magic item that gives them an extra d6 in their first charge. And so it was a long charge, but uh, he had decent odds of getting it. Uh, then the magic phase, of course, he dispels my Mountain Chimera, so now I've got a Great Brave Shaman sitting on one wound. Uh, the only good thing I have going for me is that I'm uh, weapon skill 10 with the Fencer's Blades and Toughness 5. But he's strength 5, he's re-rolling to hit. He's got Killing Blow. Yeah, yeah, he kills a Great Brave Shaman. Uh, beats the unit in combat. Luckily doesn't, doesn't run him down. Um, so I felt that was great, because that now it just delays him. If I, if I rally... He's got to charge him again instead of reforming and going after something else. Uh, over here, the Gore Horde went to town. Absolutely crazy rolling. Hit darn near everything. Strength 4, Toughness 3. He failed a bunch of ward saves. That, through wounds and combat res, took him down to where he has only his Herald left and the Herald sitting on one wound. I mean, just tore him up. Uh, over here... I, mean, I think he's doing a good job of killing a lot of my Bestigors, but the problem is he has so few left. I killed his Herald, so the, you know he just he just can't take that many wounds. It doesn't take much for me to get him whittled down. So um, I don't think this combat has gone as well as I expected it to, but I st still think there's a good chance I can win it. So we go to Beastman turn four, and luckily my Gore unit rallies, and I angle him so that if he charges me, I'm going to take it, and they'll beat me again, and... You know, if he tries to catch, capture these points, he's going to start getting set up for some flank charges by me. So it looks something like that. And of course, we just have those two other combats dragging on. And so after combat, yeah, we easily beat the Herald. Then we just did a reform, and I went seven wide because I want to be able to charge his blood letters and not have my battle standard bearer actually be in the fight. And over here, this is getting bloody. He actually didn't do too many wounds this time. Um, so I did enough to where uh, I'm confident now that uh, I should be able to kill him. I hope so. <laughs> that one's just coming down to the wire. So Demon's turn four. You know, what's he going to do? He has uh, his, his, his lone blood crusher left is tied in combat. His, his other blood letters, go ahead and charge my gore. I take it. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to go well for me. These guys don't have a chance. At the end of this combat, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he didn't kill the rest of my unit. I was able to get the final wounds off of him. So the whole Bestigore horde is down to two guys left. It just kills me in 8th edition that I get full points for that. I still like the rule where you only get half points. So these guys are, are as far as I'm concerned, they're out of the game. Their job is just to preserve their points for the rest of the game. Um, the Bloodletters uh, beat these guys. They can't run them down, which is just... You know, kind of insane. Twice in a row, we can't run him down. You can see he's rolling next to nothing. Uh, overall, it looks like that. Go to Beastman turn five, and I just move up. And again, I'm just looking for counter chargers. And I, and I rally that unit, thank goodness. Um, there's eight left. I started with less than 32. So they have over 25%. So now, if he charges them, I'm going to flee, and he's going to be set up for flank charges. And if he doesn't charge them, it might be difficult for him to not take a flank charge. So he charges him, I flee, 
And at that point, my opponent was just like, you know, we can roll it out if you want, but you've got the game. I've got one unit of blood, blood letters left. I'm not sure if he even has his herald, because I'm pretty sure I had allocated all my attacks on his herald. He may or may not. But he knew he was about to get charged in the flank by my strength four uh, battle standard bearers unit, maybe even the Gorgon. And I say maybe only because if his herald's left, I probably won't take my Gorgon in there, because I think he would die before he did any good. Um, and so he wasn't going to win that combat. So either I was going to win or it'd be just like it is now anyway. So we went ahead and called it. And uh, the rematch went to the Beastman. So I was very happy with the result. Uh, I was, you know, his, it was funny in the combat with his, his Bloodthirster. I really felt that everything that combat went his way. I failed my Primal Fury. I rolled real low for my attacks. Everything bad happened until the one thing that mattered, and that was his break test or his instability tests. And then, boom, uh, huge changer in the game. So anyway, that was it. Hope you enjoyed it.